In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to create a tile set in Krita using its reusable file layers and in general, its non-destructive workflow. I have a setup here that allows me when I update a source texture and save, go back to my platform tiles, every instance of that texture updates. Not only that, if I paint on the full size style set on the left, you can see that the version on the right updates instantly using Krita's clone layers. With that, in the next video, we will also see how to export really quickly to a game engine, the setup that we use at GD Quest. We use a bit of a shell script here to move the sprites so that they also update in game. Now, if I go back and do my change, I will re-export like so, and I can jump back in the game and see the sprites update instantly. Note that this setup that you'll see works for any number of sprites, not just exporting one at a time. This tutorial focuses more on the technical setup and we will talk about the art part in a future video. So to start with, you want to create a tiling texture. You create a new square document of the size of your choice. You will scale it down later anyway. So I'm gonna start with 200 by 200 pixels. In the game, our tiles are going to be 50 by 50 to 80 by 80 pixels. So we'll scale it down to 25 to 40% of the starting size. The first thing I will do is fill my tile with a background color. I'm using David Revoix's DVAD mini color palette here, and I will fill my canvas with the color. Then you press the W key to use the wraparound mode, to toggle it on and off. You can use that to paint and see the copies of your texture. You need to create tiling textures. So in general, I will draw for example, in the case of rocks, I'll draw the outline of the rocks really quickly. Be sure to start by you know, trying to get the color, value, contrast, and the shape of the elements that make up your tile sets right. So from there, I will work a bit to get some base texture. You can see I, I typically start with a fairly high contrast. Then I use a filter like the curves, control M, to reduce the contrast. You can create a revert S-curve. You push the point on the left part of the graph up. You create a point and push it. And you push a point down on the right part of the curve. As you can see, if I toggle the preview on and off, I'm reducing value and color contrast at the same time. Now, you want to save that file to a Krita document. I recommend to work this way. Uh, I'm gonna open the folder here in Nautilus. I have a tile sets folder, and typically for each tile set, I will have one subfolder, right? So we only have one for this project. This is why we don't have subfolders here. But for each of the document and texture I want to create, I will create a new subfolder let's say a, a grass style set or it could be water or something like that. And then I will create a textures subfolder. In this one, I will put the individual textures that make up the tile set. For now, only two, but you will soon get up to three, four, five, six, depending on the complexity of your setup. So I will save my file there in the texture subfolder. This is just so that I keep things tidy. I know where to find all the source textures very easily. From there, you want to create a new Krita document, which you can make pretty large. So let's say 2000 pixels wide. So you have a bit of space to add your tiles. The first thing you want to do is, well, I typically remove the background and I will typically use some texture from the game's background. If I go play the game, sorry for the dirty tile set, but you can see that we have some sky setup with some parallax there. So I'll typically take the main illustrations that we made for the background and blur it to have my tile set's background. So I will use a very large blur like so. And as the document is pretty big and I don't want the 
program to get slow because this image was really big as well. I'm gonna go to image and trim to the image size. It will remove all the pixels that are outside of the canvas here. Now I'm going to save that document to a creator file. So I will go to the folder where I want to save my, my main tile set. Let's say um, tutorial tile set here. And from there, I will go to my individual textures that I prepared, click and drag them onto the canvas and insert file layers. It's going to insert non-destructive documents that anytime by clicking the folder icon that you can see here in the layers docker. By clicking this folder icon, you can instantly open the source texture document that can have as many layers as you want. All that matters is the final result that you will get like that. You can already see that I have a bit of transparency on the path and with the dirt under it, it gives you a nice full tile. Also, I've gone a bit overboard with the document size, so I'm going to reduce it for performance's sake. The smaller your document, the faster the filters, etc. will calculate. So I'm going to divide the height by two. Press OK here. And from there, I want to set up my grid. You can go to View, Show the Grid, or use Control Shift and the tick to show it. Now, it's not the right size for our document, so we want to modify that a little bit. Right-click somewhere on the toolbar on the title of some Docker to show the list of available Dockers, and we want to check Grid and Guides. It should appear somewhere on your interface, and from there, you want to change the X and Y spacing. We're going to change them to 100 pixels. That is the size of our tile textures divided by two. And then I typically use subdivision. I set it to two, so it's going to merge the tiles here, the cells. It's a bit hard to see because the divider style is a little transparent at the moment. If you change the color, I'm going to make it a bit brighter and make the alpha a bit stronger, 190 in this case. Now the line is a bit more visible. You can use these division lines for snapping, for selections. To change the snapping option, you go Shift S and you want to check grid in that case. Then when you have a tool like the rectangular selection tool, it's going to snap to the grid automatically, allowing you to select one cell at a time. This is going to come in handy when you start working with the com complete tile set and have more layers on top of it. Now it's time to set up the textures in a grid of three by three tiles. To do that, we're not going to duplicate them manually. I will just name the file layers to grass and dirt, or maybe sh I should use path here. And we are going to use an option that comes with Krita to duplicate the textures. So. This tool that we're going to use is going to duplicate the current dirt texture, for example, to the right and up. So we have to move the dirt at the bottom of the 3x3 three three grid setup we're going to use. Now with the dirt layer selected, you go to the layer menu, split, and clones array. This tool is going to create clone layers that are going to use the selected layer as a base. You want in the columns and rows on the plus elements column to enter three and three. By default, it's going to offset every copy by the size of the layer. So by default, it goes right and up, but on the Y offset, if you enter minus 200 pixels, it's going to go down. Now, because I'm using the default, that's why I told you that we have to move our texture down a little bit. You can click the apply button to create the copies instantly, creating a square of textures, reusable textures, that when the file layer, the dirt one, updates, all the clones are going to update as well. So I typically move the base layer into that group, and this is my group of 
array of dirt textures. For the path at the top, we just wanted to be there three times to have the upper left and upper right corners of our tile set and the main element of the path that's going to repeat in our game. So for that, again, select the path layer, go to layer, split, clones array. You want only one row, so you want zero copies on the rows uh, here, and you want three columns. Press apply, and then you will get your three copies of the path. A quick note, when you are creating the clones, the reason why using apply is that this allows us to correct our changes. So say you start in the wrong place, you click apply, you realize that the textures are going up, then you can change the settings, click apply again, and it will correct your clones and your changes. Then you can press OK if you are satisfied or cancel to undo everything. What's good with that is that then you can create a group with the two arrays inside and you can add a transparency mask to that group. So you go to the drop down menu next to the add layer button and select transparency mask. Then I will select a pure black tone and select a brush that allows me to paint with high opacity, like very opaque strokes. And when I paint there, it's going to remove some of my texture. So when you do this at first, it will look maybe a bit off. We're going to do it a bit sloppily, right? Uh, what you want to get uh, are the corners at the bottom here. You want to get some nice setup so you have some transparency in your game. You have some edges. Don't try to make it too, too pretty at this stage, okay? Um, the Tile sets and tile maps take quite a bit of time to create. And what's most important is that you iterate. So you want to check the composition in game, the scale of the details. We'll talk more about that in a separate video. But you want to create a bit of a silhouette for your tile set. And even if it doesn't look too, too fancy, you can always come back and improve it later with the setup. Nothing is destructive, and that's the, the whole point. This is also very good if you are doing client work, assets for clients, but also illustration. When they ask you to go back and change the colors on characters, etc., if you are using these kinds of layers and masks, the advantage is that it takes a bit of time to set up at first, but then you can come back and make changes anytime. Anyway, let's say that we have the silhouette that we want. So we have a mask to do that, right? Um, and we also have a separation of layers that makes it so we could use, for example, on the array of path here, use the layer styles. So you right click on the group, select layer styles, and you can use the drop shadow style. For example, I'm going to play it at a 90 degree angle, not in multiply. I want it to be, uh, yeah, multiply mode is fine. Maybe not black then going to grab um, a brown tone from there. I just want to show you all the options that you have in Krita to quickly, efficiently create tile maps, do game art. It's really, really powerful here. And so now with just that layer effect, you can create a bit of separation between the grass and the underlying tiles. Now, the last thing I want to show you here is how to create a scaled clone of your tile set. So I'll typically use a group for my entire tile set because we have our GDQuest R tools right now, probably going to rename them, but these are the batch export tools that we created to uh, help you export assets from Krita efficiently. So I'm going to use some patterns in the name to set up the export for this layer. I'll name it, uh, this is my tile set, for example, or Tutorial tile set, for instance. And then at the bottom, I'm going to scale it down to 40% of its size, export it as a PNG file, and export it to the current folder here. Okay, so I will typically have that kind of setup so that anytime we can hide 
the entire tileset. We can export it by clicking export all layers. All the layers that have this kind of pattern in their name are going to get exported automatically. Okay, I've had a little crash, so let me start again from there. I have my tile set in a group, and now we're going to create that clone to get a reference, an idea of the tile set at the game size. So I'm going to go to my folder where I have the game sprites. I have a references folder where I have Roby, our main character, at the game size. So I'm just going to import him and place him on the canvas. Then I'm going to create a clone of this group here, of the full tile set. So select it, you go to the drop down menu next to add paint layer button, and you want to create a clone layer. Then we can move that layer around, but we can't scale it just yet. If you press Ctrl T, you're going to get an error message, a notification that you can't use the transform tool. So instead, we are going to go to the drop down menu to add a mask again. And this time we want to go down to transform mask. This is a non-destructive transform layer. So click on that. With the transform mask selected, you can now press Ctrl T to transform your layer. To scale it precisely, I'm going to press the backlash key to open the options drop down menu. Go to the scale transform. Make sure that the two values, the width and the height, are linked by clicking on the link icon next to them and scale them down to 40%. Press apply. And now the tile set is going to be at the game size. I'm going to move that clone back a little bit. And now I can place my Ruby on top of it. Create a group with the layers and changes inside of that so that I can then play a bit if I want to add, for example, some shadow and uh, Roby, I can do that. I will lower the opacity a little bit. And from there, going back to my group, if I add any layer, if I make any change, for example, if I start to paint a stroke, you can see the clone update in real time. So you can work at the full size if you place it uh, a little closer to the tile set, then you can paint and see the character, the background, you can create a little mock-up on the right, you can see or get a sense for how it will look in the game. And that is it for this tutorial. This is the base setup you want to use to create tiles efficiently. Now on the outside there is quite a bit to say. I will wait for our artist to be done with the tile set and show you how we made everything look good in the game. But note that at this stage, you want to really quickly export the tile set, even if it's very rough into the game. You can see the grass strands are really dirty at the moment. This is just to get a sense for the color composition, to get the contrast okay relative to the player, to see if we want some texture, in the dirt on the path and then we can test that in the game engine in the game with the sky setup you know even if it's a bit jittery even if we are missing tiles then we can see that okay the color contrast the value contrast is working kind of okay so we can keep working from there onto the next iteration if you have any questions suggestions feedback please tell us in the comments below but for now, I want to thank you kindly for watching, be creative, have fun, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.